Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to my channel, The Pink Dumbbell Problem. This is an episode of my Friday Fact Day series where I get to talk about my work in fitness, feminism, and philosophy. And today's fact is... Getting back on the exercise wagon is not starting from scratch. Now, this is a video that's probably not going to speak to everybody, but there's a certain segment of the population out there that has been saying things lately, especially since we've come back post-COVID lockdowns, and we've had three here in Halifax where I live, so I've been through a few iterations of this, that have been saying, I lost everything from when I stopped working out. COVID happened, or other life events, it doesn't have to be COVID, happened, and I completely stopped working out, and now I'm back at square one, and I'm an absolute beginner again. And I want to address that particular mindset specifically. I hear this a lot. And I hear it, of course, a lot more post-COVID because now we're two years almost into this pandemic and it's still going. We're not out of the woods on this yet. But certainly pre-COVID, back in the PC world, (laughs) pre-COVID, this was something that as a fitness instructor, I did hear quite a bit. It's just really COVID has ramped it way up. I hear this even at a sort of a micro level as well. Some people have sort of taken this on as their personal narrative that, you know, even if they miss a, a couple of days of working out, that they're starting from the beginning again. They've undone all the work that they've done in the past. Regular viewers of my channel, you know I'm all about the education side of this. I have a background formally in education. It's the big blue and gold wall hangings are about. So think of your experience in exercise after you've had time off, just like you would say having time off from school. If this were school, and to be clear, fitness is not school, it shouldn't be feeling like that at all but I will use it as an analogy because it's something we all kind of relate to. So let's say, for example, you took time off, you got sick, something happened in your personal life, whatever, and you didn't attend enough school to finish the ninth grade. When you come back for the next school year, would you be sent all the way back to primary or grade one or whatever these, the grade system is in wherever you live? No, of course not. We're not going to take somebody who failed the ninth grade and send them all the way back to the start of all their schooling. And the body works basically the same way when it comes to exercise and the brain works the same way. So what's important to understand is that when you learn new exercise, new sport, new dance style, whatever your physical activity is, not only is your body working, but your brain is doing a whole lot of work that you're not even aware of. And a lot of that is developing some new neural pathways uh, that we refer to colloquially as the brain body connection or the mind body connection. It's that old saying, you know, when you, you've done something that you haven't done in a long time and you're surprised you remember it and somebody goes, well, it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. Well, riding a bicycle is a very physical activity. And that's where that's coming from is that neurological pathway development that happens when you develop a new skill and a new habit. And if you remember from about a year or so ago, I did a video on the actual definition of fitness. And there's a whole list of things that are skills that are part of that definition. So it's about learning the skills as much as it is about changes to your body composition or how much you can lift and what your strength is. Even if you feel like you've forgotten everything, your body still remembers some stuff. And this can apply to really anything that is a skill you are trying to learn. It can be your exercise. It can be your diet. It can, which is also a skill. It can be a new hobby. It can be a dance style, a a sport. It can can be anything. It can be a new language you're learning. You haven't lost all. This isn't the stock market. Okay. You've got it in there. You just have to kind of reactivate it. It's like kind of like going through an old computer system in the hard drive and finding the old files that you forgot you had stored back there from some old work you did in another job years ago. And you're like, oh, wow, that's where that project went. Okay, great. I'm going to reactivate that. It is like tying your shoes. When you were a little kid, it probably took you several weeks to learn how to tie your shoelaces in a bow. And you probably haven't thought about it much since. But if you can remember what that was like when you were little, just scale that up to adulthood. It's the same process. We did a lot of that when we were little kids. It's just we so long ago for most of us, we don't actually remember it. And this is why, too, when people ask me what's the most important piece of fitness, the fitness equipment that somebody could buy, I tell them it's it's something like this. It's a notebook. Get a notebook and a pen or an app on your phone or whatever technology you like to record what you're learning and make notes just like you would in a classroom if you were learning an academic subject. I have scads of notebooks. I've like literally like... I. You, you see you see that short bookshelf over there? That's like tons of notebooks. And that's not even all of them. And that's not even my lesson plan books. Like they're down on another shelf filling a whole like 
container. I'm just one of those people who I retain information by actually physically writing it by hand. So I go through, <laughs> I go through a lot of these. The people at the dollar store know me because I come in looking for notebooks. So start making notes, do a little journaling. Again, it can be whatever you like, a physical notebook like this, but an app a spreadsheet on your computer, whatever, and start keeping track of the things you've learned. I think you're going to be surprised by how much you know. So kind of like last week, this week has kind of been a little bit of somewhere in between fact day and pep talk, but it is true. We do go through a whole lot of neurological development. We don't stop learning when we're no longer kids. You don't like magically stop learning when you turn 18 or something or 19 or whatever the age is in your country. We're not gonna send you back to grade primary or grade one if you miss some time or you feel like you've failed to keep up or keep your routines going. It's all good. You're gonna pick it back up. It is like riding a bicycle. And you know what, so what? So what if you had time off? So what if you lost some of your gains? You'll get them back. Right? That's the important thing is that the body will adapt and it's just going to take a little bit of time and it'll take less time than when you were an absolute beginner starting from scratch for real because you've already got so much of the base learning done. I mean, hey, if you don't have to learn squats again, that's a lot of time saved, right? So take heart, dear friends. It's not the end of the line. It's just a reboot. And as I always say, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>